How many mountains to get some confidence? How many debates to earn some tailwind? The years pass. I'm still the same. Hi everyone, it's Mary Beth from MB Gray Designs. Welcome to my channel. Today I've got five rustic bee DIYs for you. Well, I don't know if they're all rustic. I think so. Anyway, <laughs> maybe not the last one. Okay, so this first one I have a can and I, I've seen this. I've seen other creators do it. Um, I've seen rustic and lace do it. That's where I really was like, oh my gosh, I have to do this. But I know people, there's a lot on Pinterest. It's so easy. You just make sure the both bottom and the top are open, obviously, and it's empty. And yeah, you saw what I did. You just kind of squeeze it and then pound the bottom and you have a little pocket. It's so cool. I highly suggest everybody try this DIY. Be careful though. You know, don't cut yourself or anything or pound your finger with the hammer. Um, all right, and so what I wanted was a galvanized look, like really old. And since the can was already silver, I just needed to use, I'm using uh, obviously black, and then that other color was a medium gray. And I'm going to go back and forth, back and forth several times. This, I love this technique so much. Like I, I literally could watch TV and just paint galvanized, make things look galvanized. I think it's so fun to do. Now I do typically add, um, and I don't know if you can tell, but just a little bit of white too and then i'll cover it up so um once in a while I'll add a little bit of white all right so i have some stencils that i got off of amazon they are in my uh amazon store if you're interested oh my gosh i think it came with quite a few maybe like six of them or a, a pretty good size amount of stencils and they're all six by six like this anyway so i'm going to paint the b on here obviously um on the front and yeah yeah i think it turns out cute i was like i don't know how this is gonna work out because you know i really couldn't tape it down i just had to really hold it and <clears throat> i didn't care if it wasn't perfect because again this is very rustic so which is my kind of thing right it doesn't have to be perfect so yeah um all right so i've got this crocodile tool i'm a i've done a lot of paper crafting this is a tool that we use in paper crafting to set eyelets. Um, that's the main reason for it, but it does have uh, two different size hole punchers in it and it can punch through, you know, some heavy duty stuff. So that's why I used it to make these holes. And then as you can see, I'm just going to wrap some ribbon and I will put a hanger um, of twine on the back, I think towards the end. But all I'm going to do is fill my little pocket up with some cute florals and some um what are they called the honey dippers i think they're called and little bees and just a bunch of cuteness uh yeah i really like this one so you'll definitely have to let me know what you think it's been four weeks since you called and i've been waiting here for you all along i've been waiting here for you all along Where you been? Where did you go? I wonder if you found what you're looking for. Wonder if you found what you're looking for. I hope it's not too late. I want you back here with me. We never should have said it's better this way. I'd rather be with you than someone I don't know Now it's like we're living in two separate worlds Come on back to me, say that you won't go I can't cope without you and I wanna hold you close Say that you won't go Say that you won't go Try, try to figure out 
Okay, so you can see I just drizzled hot glue. Be careful doing that too. Um, and let that dry. And then I'm going to be using, look at these cute little bees. Now they have some sticky back on them. You could either pull that off or not, but I thought it'd be cute to make a little bow with the bee. And I'm going to paint the, you'll see here in a moment, the, the honey, fake honey on the honey dippers, uh, a yellow color. I can't remember. Hopefully I show you the color. Oh, we'll see. Uh, I do have some of the goldish color, gold colored hot glue. And I tried to use it before and it works okay. It has a little bit of sparkle in it. So sometimes I use it and then sometimes I also paint it. So I guess whatever works for you, you know, but these bees, I just thought they were so cute. So I had to put them, you know, in the floral arrangement because I'm like, oh, they're just flying by, you know, landing on the, I guess I should have put them on the flowers, not the leaves, but okay. You know, oh, I guess I already painted, sorry. I already painted the, the fake honey, but you get the point. I just painted that. And yeah, and I'm gonna, gotta add some bees onto my honey and just dress it up. Oh my goodness, I just think this turned out so, so cute. It was a lot of fun to make. I definitely wanna make more of these with different size cans and oh, I just thought it was so much fun. What a great way to recycle your cans too. I hope you enjoyed it. felt as good or as easy as when we were young oh, oh, oh. though I felt misunderstood it was a pleasure running away okay moving on to DIY number two so I got this sign 60 or 66 percent off or something like that at Hobby Lobby <clears throat> so it was very inexpensive it's a really nice wooden sign I actually picked up several of them well three of them to be exact and I'm going to do all of them on this on this uh video but you'll see I anyway <laughs> I'm starting off with painting it that milk jug color I love that milk jug color and I'm going to use I think that was truffle to just do a little bit of distressing. These wooden pieces, I think, turned out so cute. They're, they are vintage. They're, or excuse me, rustics. I guess kind of a little vintage. You'll, you'll have to let me know what you think. So I'm just going to do some distressing. And I'm also going to actually use a little bit of this yellow color and dry brush it. Oh, do I do that yet? Sorry, I'm getting ahead of myself. Yeah, I use a little bit of the yellow and dry brush it on there as well. Um, because I'm going to be using some of those stencils again. So you'll see that here in just a minute. So I wanted to bring the yellow into the background too. What color's that medium gray and black? What am I doing now? I'm sorry. I'm not, oh, I got the stencil. It's hard to see. Sorry. It's the same one that I used on the previous DIY. That's right. Um, the difference is I don't know if I did the little crown on the previous one, but I wanted to mix the gray and the black together just to make it a much darker gray, you know? It's just the color I was looking for. So I'm gonna go ahead and yeah, tape this down. Perfect fit, by the way, to that piece of wood and stencil away. Now you will see a couple different stencils that I'm gonna use. It just so happens that <laughs> I use the same stencil that I did on the first project.
Okay, so you saw I took uh, some of the black and medium gray paint and just went to where those lines were just to, I don't know, emphasize them, I guess. And my husband had a good idea. He's like, I think you should add some of that yellow, you know, in to make sure people know it's a bee. I'm like, well, I, I think they're going to know it's a bee, but okay. But it actually was a good idea. So I just very little amount, I guess, just those two areas, I painted some yellow. And I was like, good job. Good job, honey. I thought that was a good idea. So anyway, I end up doing on all three of them, you'll see I do put a little touch of yellow somewhere, I think. And now I'm sanding it down. I really wanted again for this to look aged and rustic. And I really love how this one turned out. I did not, by the way, see, there's the other ones. There's the be happy and then the florally looking one. And you can see the difference after I sand it. That's what I'm trying to show you there. Now, the floral one, um, instead of a stencil, I'm going to use this napkin. And so, yeah, so that's what I'm doing here, just prepping, and it's going to go in the middle. So while I'm doing all this, I just want to thank everybody for coming to my channel. I really appreciate your support. If you are new, I welcome you. My name is Mary Beth. I love to do all different types of DIYs, different types of genres. I love doing thrift flips. I like doing, you know, trash to treasures, things of that nature. So if any of that interests you, I invite you to subscribe to my channel. And if you are an existing subscriber, you already know I'm so, so grateful for you. And I'm so grateful for your continued support and returning to my channel. So thank you very, very much. And I do have a favor of all of you. If you don't mind, please go ahead and hit that likes or likes the likes, the thumbs up button, or give me a like if you wish. Uh, it does really help my channel out a lot. And it also helps others to see my video that may be interested as well. So I do appreciate that. Okay. Getting back to here. So I guess what I decided to do. Yeah. I cut the, the B out. That's what it probably. And I had to, you know, take the backing of the napkin off and then I cut the B out and I'm very carefully putting a little bit of my patch, not a lot on the back of this B. And that is how we're going to do that. And then I will also put some Mod Podge on top of it. And then what I tried to do, I don't know how successful I was, but I am going to take an X-Acto knife um, and I want to cut the napkin where that line is. I don't know what to call it. The little indented line on the wood, like the shiplap thing. Uh, you'll see that here in a moment. I think I am must be switching back and forth. Oh yeah, I'm doing the I guess this time I just used truffle, but I'm going in, in between there now. Just wanted to accentuate those, those grooves. That's the word I'm looking for. Anyway, going back to when I took the X-Acto knife and you'll see that. I think I show it. Maybe I don't, but I had to be very, very careful. There I am. And I don't know if I had enough Mod Podge on top where I just was really careful because I kind of thought I tore it a little bit. It ended up being okay. I don't think you can notice anything, but anyway. There you go. There's that. And then, yeah, here they are. I decided to keep them simple in the sense that I didn't want to put bows on them. Although it would look super cute if you did. I didn't make a hanger because they have their own, you know, back thing to stand up. I just made them simple. I did. Sometimes, you know, sometimes simple is is good, good enough. So I really do hope you like that project. All right, moving right along to DIY number three. Oh, this one is so fun. This one's a cute one. Now I found this at the thrift store and it looked like, I mean, it was just a new little piece that somebody donated, you know, it's just a little raw wooden piece of wood with these hanger things on top. And basically I'm going to you know, paint it and distress it. I'm going to put some, it's going to hold florals. We're going to do some sunflowers, which is so super cute. And we're going to use uh, a wooden bee that I got, uh, like a wooden cutout of a bee for this project that I got off of Amazon. And, you know, I love to mix my, my paints up. So we're doing that first. And yeah, we're, we're, it's, it's a really easy project, really fun project. We use some little beads again 
little beads. I apologize. Little bees, different sizes, I think, in this one. Some are kind of a medium, smaller, etc. You'll see that. Some honey dippers again. And I think this one turned out so, so cute. You will see something kind of funny in this one, though. I'll be back to talk about it. Don't tell me what's going on. This one, the way I painted the bee, the reason I didn't show it is because I actually did this DIY after another DIY, which in the video is the fifth DIY. So you'll see how I painted then. I apologize. Anyway, um, I decided with the honey dippers, I wanted it to look a little rusticy, So that's why I used, uh, I believe, the same color uh, that I used on the... I don't know what to call it, the box looking thing. Uh, but same as last time where, you know, I just drizzle the hot glue and then I'll paint it uh, the yellow color for the fake honey. So I'm going to take some uh, floral foam and just cut it down to size. And I only want that bottom space before the first uh, piece of wood that goes over roughly, you know, that's where I want to fill up. So here is the ribbon. Okay, this ribbon's so cute. By the way, the bees are on Amazon, the ribbons on Amazon storefront, all that stuff. But anyway, I was like, oh yeah, this is super cute. You know, this will cover up so you can't see the floral foam, right? <clears throat> so here I go. I'm like, ooh, looking good, looking good. And I'm going to hot glue this down in just a moment. Just measuring. I didn't want to go all the way around, I guess. So I just... Um, folded the ends in, kind of wanted a neat end to it, which is really funny when you see what happens. But yeah, so I'm being very neat in particular. Here we go. <laughs> oh my gosh. Uh, and yeah, gonna hot glue it. I do like the flowers I picked for this one though. They're super cute. Sunflowers, love sunflowers and bees together. I just think it's so summery and cute, you know? So yeah. All right. Here we go. What is wrong with that picture? So the ribbon's upside down. Do I notice it? No, no, I don't. Not at all. Mm -mm. Don't even notice it. Completely upside down, right? And of course, it's a ribbon that 
clearly has a right side and an upside down side. You know, it's not like a buffalo track where it wouldn't matter. So I continue along my little way, putting my sunflowers in, decorating this thing up, which I do think it turned out so, so cute. Um, and I'll, I'll let you know, uh, when I was all finished, I was all proud. And I said to my husband, oh, look how cute this is, yada, yada. And uh, immediately he goes, huh, did you want the ribbon upside down? <laughs> I'm like, what? And so I ended up, um, luckily with a heat gun, luckily, if you use hot glue, you can you know, undo this mistake. The only thing is that, I will say this, I use Gorilla Hot Glue. The wooden bee hot glued to that wooden frame, which part of it's over the ribbon, would not come undone. There was nothing I could do. So luckily I was still able to make it work and I was able to put new ribbon on, but you'll notice in my pictures, it's lower. It's not in the same exact spot when you see the, um, the pictures at the end here in just a second. See, it's lower. Do you notice that? I, I th There was nothing I could do. I still think it turned out cute. We still covered up the floral foam. That was really the main purpose. Plus the bow is cute or the, or the ribbon rather. So yeah, there you go. <laughs> All right. Please tell me I'm not the only one that does stuff like that. I cannot be the only person <laughs> and does that type of stuff and doesn't even notice. Good Lord. Um, all right. So this next DIY was really simple, so super cute. Again, gonna mix some paints. Um, I mean, you could leave this black. It would have looked really cute. This is just a do little Dollar Tree frame, no big deal. Um, and what do I do? Mm -hmm, mm, do I paint it white first? Oh, I already painted it. I'm sorry. It, just because it was the same mixture that I've been using with those two colors. And then I painted the um, frame. And so what I'm showing you here is I'm just taking white and dry brushing. And again, I like to do the heavy for this particular one. I wanted to be very heavy, make it look more like a chippy type paint thing, which by the way, if you're interested in a technique of doing chippy paint, I have a video uh, listed uh, or on my um, channel. I will try, I will try to remember to list it in my description box as well. Anyway, all right, so, and then I, I just go back and forth, back and forth. <laughs> I do this a lot. And again, I think doing that gives it more of that effect where it's been outside, sun, heat, rain, you name it. And it's just weather, right? That, that it's something that's been painted multiple times and then it gets weathered and then painted again. That's the look I'm going for anyway. So that's how sometimes I accomplish that. All right. So we're just simply going to take some uh, craft sticks and... I did get the I believe, off Amazon. So they should be in my Amazon storefront. Uh, and I'm going to just take a moment here, cut them all down to size. And then obviously I'm just going to adhere them uh, to the back. But I think I paint them uh, white and probably do some distressing as well. It really makes me wonder. Okay, so look at this beautiful napkin again on the Amazon storefront because I know people ask sometimes. I just want to make sure I let you know. Anyway, I decided to. Oh, I saw that trick where you take painter's tape. Look at that to get the uh, layers off. And I found that from uh, Kathy Joe. 
what is her is that the name of, oh i can't think of her channel love her but anyway it worked okay so i just wanted to cut you know this napkin to the size i needed i had to cut a little bit off those two sides uh so it wasn't like a full circle you can see there i just wanted to fit it inside the frame and simply gonna do what we did last time you know we're gonna put a little mop patch on and and then uh adhere the the napkin and then we will put mod podge on top of it as well once it dries make sure because i get impatient sometimes make sure it's dry which it dries quick but make sure it's dry <laughs> before you move forward or you'll have a good chance of ripping you know your napkin they're just so delicate but i'm really like i'm into it now i'm liking the decoupage thing Anyway, so now what I'm going to do is, uh, that's Mod Podge. So I'm going to put it all over because I want to seal everything in, obviously, but especially that napkin now at this point. And again, because it's rustic, which works for me, if there's little boo-boos here and there, to me, it really doesn't matter because it's a rustic piece. I mean, I try not to have that, but, you know, don't be hard on yourself. I make mistakes in every single, I mean, my gosh, you just saw the last one, right? The ribbon upside down. <laughs> It just happens. It's not a big deal. Uh, okay, so I thought that I distressed the white. Hmm, I can't remember. Let's see. Maybe I didn't. Now I'm going to take my X-Acto knife, and I'm going to kind of go through the napkin again. <sighs> and this is where I don't think I had enough Mod Podge on top of the napkin because it would have been easier to kind of cut through without... I, I ripped it a little bit, but again it's okay i think i don't think anyone's really going to notice and if someone's over here looking at it that closely like oh my gosh look you ripped that napkin i'm gonna be like you know what you can leave my house now thank you very much <laughs> i'm sorry i'm in a crazy mood all right so i just thought i wanted those lines to show up you know i guess i didn't distress the white for some reason i thought i did it would look cute if you did but anyway I am picking out some fun ribbons here. I'm loving this brown and white uh, gingham, right? Plaid, gingham, whatever. Um, and I, I spoke about some stuff that I got at a little teeny shop just owned by a lady in an extremely small town. And she was getting rid of all her craft stuff. And I got a huge rolls of ribbons, humongous rolls for like 25 cents. Okay. So yeah, I, and they're more unique, like ribbons. They're very old. Um, I, I'd say even vintage. Some of them are just so old and I got some lace from her. It was amazing, amazing, amazing deal. But anyway, so I decided I want to make a messy bow and I just love making the messy bows. So as you can see, I just picked, um, several I got a little lace in there too. I'm loving that contrast with rustic, but a little lace. Love it. Love, love, love it. Uh, you know, I like shabby chic. I like rustic. I like vintage. I like mixing it all together. That's my style. But again, I always say this, you know, take what I do. And if you like it and it inspires you, make it however you like. You can make it in a totally different color palette different style, different type of bow, whatever, but at least it gives you, you know, some inspiration. And look how inexpensive it is to make such a cute little piece, right? A dollar for the frame. I mean, the popsicle six, basically nothing. I mean, there's a huge amount you get. And same with the napkins. It's one quarter of one napkin, you know? So I just love the fact that you can take things like this and make the cutest stuff for your home or for gifts for people. You know, it's just so adorable. I love it. Love, love, love it. And then, yeah, I put a little sunflower on the bow. Oh, I did. Okay. So this is a Stabilo all pencil. You don't need to use any pencil. Okay. That's what I could find. Don't worry about it. But if you do use this pencil, make sure you do it after your Mod Podge because it's, uh, um, water reactive right so anyway that doesn't matter just use a pencil i just wanted to go through and kind of make those lines pop a, a colored pencil would be good like just a regular black colored pencil um so that's what i did there and then yeah just gonna hot glue the cute little bow on top and then of course finish hot gluing it fluff it up you know you know the drill 
And there it is. I think it's so cute. I really liked how this one turned out. I did. I thought it was so cute. And what a great idea. You can do it with any types of napkins. You could do fruit, lemons, I mean, flowers, whatever, right? So, so and that would be cute for a tear tray too, because that's, I think, a five by seven, like for the top of a tear tray or something. That'd be super cute. All right, so here's the same wooden type of bead. We're going to make a garland. This is a little different though, so I'm really excited to show this to you. Okay, this is how I painted that other bee. So I wanted to show you, but I am going to do something different to this bee. So it's kind of a combo here. All right, so I just took this yellow paint <clears throat> by Folk Art. I think this is the sunflower color, which I really like. And we're gonna, you know, I'm just painting the body. It's really easy. You know, I, I just looked at one of the little bees that I got from Amazon and just kind of followed, oh, it's like a V at the top, you know, how, where the colors would lie. It was real simple, right? And so I'm gonna paint the wings white. Now you may not necessarily have to do this when you see what else I do. Sorry, I had to get a drink. I'm talking a lot in this video. It's kind of unusual for me. Um, but I, yeah, I, I added, I painted it white. Okay, so we're gonna paint his cute little face and his little antennas and then the, the little bottom of the bee like that and do it to both sides. Now, I took some really small washi tape <clears throat> you could use a ruler and draw lines too. I mean, I just wanted to do different uh, stripes and I wanted them to be not all the same width. And I just guesstimated, I just made it up, but you, you know, whatever. You could easily just take a Sharpie and draw lines, whatever works for you. But I have a ton of washi tape, so I might as well use it. <laughs> so yeah, so that's what I do here. And I ended up uh, using, I was using Apple Barrel Black acrylic paint and I did do two coats. I wanted it to be really, you know, black, uh, going over that yellow. Yeah. I don't know why I'm showing you that I did two coats, but I'm showing you. I love revealing. Look at that cute. So see, I got some thinner line, a thin line, a medium and a thicker, whatever. So I did it to both sides and then I'm just going to take this. I love these white, uh, paint marker, chalk paint, whatever from Dollar Tree, these pens. I think they're fantastic. Okay. I love them. <laughs> uh, anyway, and they have the gold and they have different colors, silver. I think they have blue. They have, they're really good. You know, sometimes you find really good gems at Dollar Tree. Um, all right. So I have this cute white lace, right? Just this little lace. And I thought I'm going to cut pieces and I'm going to make the wings uh, lace, have lace on them all the way covered the wings completely covered with lace so as you can see i needed to do this four times because front and back front and back for each wing so once i got the size of the lace it was real simple i just cut four of each of them the same size and i basically just did you know well you'll see i mean whatever however you want to cut you could take a bigger piece of lace instead of strips and do it all at once too whatever i just thought it would be cute to have a little bit of texture on this cute little bee, right? And then I dried it and then I really loaded it up with Mod Podge on top of it. I wanted that thing to be, you know, very much on there. And then I trimmed around it. Look how cute that is with the lace. <laughs> I just thought it gave it a dainty look, you know. Okay, so these beads, I had some very similar for spring Easter colors, and they come with um, these already made tassels, which are super cute. Um, and this one, I did not use one of those tassels, but anyway, so I'm gonna take these beads and do a little pattern. Let's see, what do I do? What do I do? What do I do? We'll see here in a minute. New, uh, natural yellow buffalo check black. I think that's the order I went in. I'll show you once I have two of them sets. There you go. So yeah, natural yellow, buffalo, black, like that. That's what I did. You could do any pattern you'd like, but I made my own tassel. I wanted it to be bigger and I want to add a lot of different fibers. Okay, so as I mentioned, my editing software voiceover just cut me 
off like I was talking too long. That's hilarious. But what I was going to say, I'll keep it short. Uh, I've done a lot of paper crafting and I make a lot of traveler's notebooks, you know, different journals, you know, whatever. And so a lot of tassels to go on the sides of uh, mini albums, books, whatever. And um, a lot of times not with any twine. It's just all fabric and laces and beads and different things. And so I do love doing that. And I think I'm going to do that more in my DIYs like this one where you add different textures. Um, I, I personally like that. You wouldn't have to do that, but I like it. I think it turned out so cute. So we just added different ribbons and a little bit of lace. I didn't add beads to this. I mean, it's a beaded garland, right? So, but you could. Uh, and yeah, I'm just going to tie this on to the opposite end of where the B is, and that was it. I've always known what I want, just didn't know what came along. Finding myself a much less happy. Back in the days I used to dream about one day, a life so amazing, not everyone judging me. Care about them, though it hurts so bad. I wanna... There it is. <laughs> so cute, so cute. Uh Oh my gosh, I love all five of these. Please let me know what you think. Please let me know if you would try some. Send me a picture. Um, tag me on Instagram and be great designs. Just would love to see your work if I inspire you at all. Uh, all right, everybody, have a wonderful weekend, and we will talk to everyone soon. Bye-bye.